Um, hello, Peter. It's now top of the hour, and I can confirm we are streaming live on YouTube. Um, do we have the green light to begin? Hi, Diana. I think uh, we could start or possibly give two minutes to uh, participants who are joining. You can see the numbers. So maybe two minutes, then we could start. Okay, that's fine. We'll give the participants an additional two minutes. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Diana Isokata, and I work for IFC, and I will be your moderator for today's session. Um, I will request uh, that before we kick off the session, we could uh, probably go over some ground rules. And uh, first of all is I will request all participants to kindly turn off your cameras uh, those of us joining via WebEx, we will only have the presenters switching on their cameras. And this is to make sure that uh, we use uh, minimum uh, bandwidth consumption. Um, the uh, camera icon is the one on the bottom of your screen. The second icon from the left. Kindly click on that to switch off your camera. Secondly, uh, I will request... Uh, Diana, we, we lost you. I think there was an interruption in the connection. Uh, maybe just go back a few steps. We okay. Okay. Allow me to begin by welcoming all the participants and thank you for joining us today. Uh, we'll, our webinar is Accessing Financing for Importers and Clearing and Forwarding Agents. And uh, before we begin the session, I will just go through over some housekeeping rules, first of which is to request our participants joining us on WebEx to switch off your cameras. Uh, the camera icon on WebEx is the second icon at the bottom of your screen, second icon from the left at the bottom of your screen. And then uh, do also switch off your... 
microphones. Uh, Sarah, am I clear? Yes, we can, yeah, hear, you, we can hear you, Proceed. Okay, thank you. Um, secondly, is uh, to request that we also switch off our uh, microphones um, to ensure that we have minimal interruption during the session. Um, the microphone icon is the first icon at the bottom of the screen, the first icon at the left, on the left at the bottom of your screen. We will be using the chat box to share feedback and uh, pose questions to the panel. We will have a Q&A session where the panel will get to answer the questions based during the session. Uh, in case uh, we have participants experiencing challenges with uh, audio on WebEx, kindly click on the audio option and then go to audio connection, then select call using my computer. Alternatively, you could join us through YouTube and I'll post uh, the link on the chat box. And finally, um, today's webinar will be delivered via WebEx and YouTube, and the session will be recorded. I will now hand over to um, Dorcas Mogambi to kick us off. Over to you, Dorcas. Thank you so very much, uh, uh, Diana, for those uh, opening remarks, and a big welcome to everybody today. And uh, before we get started, we, I would like us to start with a word of prayer and I request uh, Peter and Dumia to lead us with a word of prayer. Peter, you are on mute. We can't hear you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dorcas. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, this morning we want to thank you. We want to appreciate your goodness and your mercies. Thank you for this day that, Lord, we are going to have a session with our customers uh in regards to importation businesses and clearing and forwarding as we interact and as we continue to learn today we pray for your insights we pray that you guide us we even pray that lord you continue to bless the businesses of our customers so that not even with the pandemic season that they are going to thrive and they're going to prosper in whatever they do. As we start this meeting, we pray that you'll go ahead of us in all the things that we do. And Lord, may we come out better than the way we came. In Jesus' name, we do pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, a good morning once again, Tim. We are excited to have this uh, webinar uh, to just, uh, as Cooperative Bank, uh, uh, pass a message of um, training and even trying to empower our customers. We'd want to really appreciate uh, the people who have joined us. Uh, this is going to be a great and exciting uh, discussion or conversation to support our customers, especially in this, uh, uh, you know, unprecedented time where we find ourselves in a situation where a lot of things are changing. And I mean, there's a lot of uh, dynamic in everything that we are doing. And as Cooperative Bank, of course, we are committed to support. And that is why we have brought on board our very good partners from IFC to come and support and even speak to us and um, empower us, especially in matters um, I, I mean, in, in matters of financing your importations and even uh, financing your import duty. So to, with us today, we have uh, IFC who will be facilitating us and even taking us through some of the things that, you know, we fear or we are not even sure about. We have uh, Sarah and of course, Diana, who is uh, moderating us uh, this morning. We also have a couple of uh, cooperative bank uh, team uh, that is uh, both uh, in trade finance and in uh, your relationship managers to support and even to uh, take on uh, some of the things that or, or give the commitment 
on uh, the things that the bank is doing to ensure that you're back on foot and you start thriving. So we really want to thank each one and everybody. And as we get started, I want to give it uh, to Sarah Mbiji, who is our consultant for today, uh, to take us uh, through the program. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dorcas, uh, for that intro, uh, introduction. And a very good morning to uh, not only Dorcas, the whole cooperative bank team. A very good morning to you. A good morning to all uh, IFC, the IFC uh, uh, team, which I'll be introducing shortly. And a very good morning to all the customers who are joining us. This is uh, uh, one, of, one of the excitements of my life, you know, just coming on board uh, uh, cooperative bank. We have been doing several sessions. If I'm not wrong, this should be our 10th or 11th session. And I, I want to recognize uh, cooperative bank and the efforts that you're making in, uh, in, in putting together sector specific, uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, grouping such as this one, so that we can discuss what uh, challenges we are facing in our sector and how we can work together, how we can strengthen each other. So thank you very much and uh, welcome on board. Uh, before I go too far, it's important that I recognize uh, the IFC team. Just as Dorcas said, this is uh, this uh, this particular webinar and the and the others that we have been uh, conducting are as a result of a partnership between Cooperative Bank and IFC. Maybe for those of you who may not have heard of IFC, IFC is the International Finance Corporation, a member of the World Bank Group. The mandate of IFC is to strengthen the private sector, organizations and businesses uh, just like yours. And I'm not alone today. I am joined uh, with our team leader, uh, Stella Masinde, and uh, it's always a joy to have you on board. And I'm gonna give you an opportunity in the next one or two minutes just to uh, say hi uh, to our participants. Stella, over to you. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Dorcas. Good morning, uh, all participants, and welcome to the session. Uh, we hope you will enjoy it and get as much value out of it as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stella. I feel very confident when I know uh, that uh, you are leading us, just as you always do. Uh, again, uh, I am uh, being supported by Diana. And Diana is in charge of the technical aspects of this webinar, just making sure that if you have any challenges, just let her know and uh, she will be able to, uh, to sort you out as we go along. And so my name is Sarah, Sarah Mbinji. I'm not new to the Cooperative Bank family. Uh, we have been walking this journey actually from uh, the beginning of the year when COVID visited us and we didn't know how to navigate. Uh, but we have been uh, learning the ropes and uh, and we're moving forward. So I know we're having challenges uh, and really we are here to encourage you and to strengthen you and to look for different ways of doing business. I am an IFC certified instructional uh, designer and what that simply means is that I develop training content like the content that we are going to be going through and over and above that I'm also a certified a trainer with IFC, a business mentor. Uh, and uh, basically what I just want to talk about is that I'm a business person just like you. And I've been in business uh, for the last 20 years as an SME. So panda shuka zote za biashara tunazijua. And uh, we are confident to have this, uh, I'm confident to have this engagement with you. 14 years uh, of my life dedicated uh, at strengthening uh, you know, customers, SME customers, uh, just like you. So I wouldn't want to uh, say much more about the ground rules because Diana said, uh, she said something about muting the, the, the microphones. And I want to thank you so much for, uh, your cooperation because I can, I, I can't hear a noise in the background, but I want to encourage us. Let's participate. I know you're coming in. Uh, uh, with very, there's something that brought you on board. Maybe you're struggling with something, you're, you're trying, you know, just trying to navigate through this very unfamiliar uh, landscape, just as Dorcas said. There are a lot of changes taking place in the business environment day and night. And so we'd really like to hear from you. What challenges are you uh, facing so that we can see how to assist each other as we walk this road? 
I'm going to try and make this uh, session very open, participatory, uh, because it's important that we hear from you. Uh, and again, because this, you know, we're just trying to go through the challenge of, uh, you know, uh, social distancing and so on. So it's very critical uh, that we communicate, that we meet at the chat box. Uh, I'll be asking you uh, some questions, some feedback. Please feel free uh, to go to the chat box and uh, and give and relay that information to us. Uh, this is a safe space, and we are going to respect each and every opinion uh, that comes through. So let me start by asking you, uh, what challenges are you facing as an importer, as a clearing and forwarding agent? What are you grappling with? What uh, struggles do you have? What are your pain points? I would like to invite you, kindly go to the chat box and um, please talk to us. Uh, maybe let me go to Diana. Diana, can you kindly, just in case we have uh, some participants joining us this morning, who are not sure exactly where to find the chat box. Uh, Diana, can I kindly ask you to take them to the chat box? Then we can continue with the conversation. Diana, over to you. Um, uh, thank you, Sarah. And uh, I've typed uh, the questions that uh, you posed to the participants in the chat box. And uh, for those joining via WebEx, the chat box is the third icon on the right of your screen at the bottom of uh, the page. So kindly use that to share your feedback. What challenges are you facing as a clearing agent or an importer uh, in the course of your business? We'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Diana. And uh, thank you also our YouTube participants. So I see Edwin, Edwin says, uh, you're from uh, FutureLink Technologies. Welcome on board. My question to you is, what challenges are you currently facing? What problems would you like fixed? Please go to the chat box and kindly talk to us. Okay. Uh, so, uh, George, I see, I see that you have sent me a message uh, privately. Maybe let me just read it out. Maybe perhaps you meant to send it. Uh, for participants who may be wanting to say something, please make sure that it is, uh, it is addressed to everyone so that we can all see. Myself, George says, I'm a new businessman. I import and sell cars. My network has really gone down and I get a, and, and I get a lot of uh, referrals. My biggest challenge is capital. I get customers, but I don't have capital to bring a car since they need bank finance to get the car. Thank you so much, uh, George, for that feedback. And we hear you in the room. Cooperative Bank is here and we're listening to you with a big ear and we have some proposals of some solutions uh, that we want to offer to you. Thank you so much, uh, George. In addition to what George is saying, these are some of the challenges that cut across and they're affecting us in one way or another. Uh, Sarah, that... probably I could read uh, f some yes. feedback coming from YouTube. Yes, sure. And uh, we have Flora who says that my biggest challenge as an importer and in supply business at large is lack of finances, getting a loan from, I, I guess they meant to write bank using my assets has been so difficult. And then we also have a comment from Julius Kabari, and he says, what I want to hear is financing without mandatory collateral. Thank mm. you. Over to you, um, <laughs> Sarah. Thank you so much for Diana for keeping track of, of our YouTube uh, uh, guests. And uh, we are very keen to hear uh, what are the challenges that we are facing uh, so that we can help you uh, to deal with them. That's what this uh, webinar is all about. Thank you so much, Flora, for that feedback. Lack of uh, finances, or, or maybe even perhaps uh, lack of the knowledge of the different products that are available to help us as importers. Thank you, uh, Flora, for that. And then Julius. Julius says, look, I would like to get finances, but because on Mingi Sana, there's so many mandatory requirements. Is there a way that I can maybe get to know more or is there a way that they could be relaxed or, or something like that? So these are the questions that this webinar is all about. We want to focus on giving you solutions. 
based on what is challenging you. So we have seen a lot of shifts in demand and supply during 2020, which is what we're calling the, you know, the COVID, uh, you know, uh, the, the pandemic period. And uh, at one point, our borders were completely shut, but then the borders have been opening up and so on. And so, of course, that has, uh, uh, necess you know, brought about uh, all these shifts in demand and supply. And as a result, the prices have had to go up. And for us as business people, of course, when the cost of business goes up, we try to pass on that cost as much as possible to a customer somewhere. But remember that customer is also distressed. They are also struggling with their financial issues as a result of the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. So these are some of the challenges that we're facing and we're trying to see how can we go around that? Of course, there are also changes in suppliers, depending on whether you're an importer especially for those of us who are importers, if one route is blocked, is it possible that I can identify another supplier who can give me quality products or something similar to what I was uh, supplying before? That's one, one, one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it, whenever we think about imports, bringing in products or such, certain goods, we must be driven by the customer's need. So the question we are asking ourselves and the question I would ask you as importers, are we aware of the changing needs of the customers out there? Because whatever we bring, we have to be able to, be, we, we, we must be confident that we'll be able to sell and get a return and get the cash flowing because cash flow is what we need, especially during this, uh, this uh, ch uh, challenging times of, of, of the COVID-19. And so you need to listen to your customers. What do the customers want? And that's what you should supply. Now, the challenge here is that as you identify uh, or you go through the process of identifying different suppliers, there's also uh, a trust kind of relationship that you need to build. Or maybe you had built a trust relationship with a previous supplier who perhaps is not supplying you as effectively. So these are some of the challenges we're looking at. Stockouts, you know, trying to restock. Uh, I have been looking around, uh, going into some of these uh, uh, shops, hardware, electronics, and so on. And there's that challenge because we are told, you know what, we are not able, we are still waiting. We are told that our stock is in the high seas and so on. It's taking a bit longer. There are challenges of document handling. Uh, uh, you know, I, I know that you people are involved, uh, you know, you do a lot of uh, logistics. Your business is so much about uh, logistics, trying to manage uh, transporters, the goods and so on. And now with COVID, uh, I, I, in fact, earlier on, there were, there were restrictions around travel. Of course, that has relaxed and that's uh, good for our businesses. The challenges of, of Forex, uh, cost of uh, increased uh, cost of, 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 of of goods, there's a lot of competition, there are cash flow uh, management problems. And as you have heard from our friends who have said, access to finance is a big, it's a big thing. And that's what we want to talk about, that credit management and, and basically how can we be assisted so that we continue in business, so that we survive and not only survive, thrive and make our businesses profitable. So these are some of the things that we want to uh, focus on. And there's so much that I can say, but this webinar is gonna be a two part presentation. I'll start off by giving you uh, the big picture of just to assist you some business uh, tips of how we can navigate uh, through this COVID uh, period. And I just want to share with you three um, uh, tips. Uh, you know, I say less is more so that I can allow cooperative bank team. I know they are very ready to tell you more about the kind of products uh, that would interest you. But again, it's driven uh, by your needs. So we'll have this uh, conversation as we go along. And again, your needs are very unique. They are unique to your business, unique to your needs and your demands. And uh, I think cooperative bank is saying, look, come, let's talk. Let's understand what your need is and we'll give you a solution. I will leave that to that uh, to them. I want to just focus on some 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 business management um, tips that I can give you as a value addition because you came on board. Number one, I'll talk about the need for us to shift our perspectives, especially during this COVID nineteen uh, pandemic. And perhaps you're wondering what's all that about. 
I'll get that, I'll get to that in the next one minute or so. Number two, I think it's important for us to focus on our stakeholders. Who are these stakeholders? And we know who they are. But my question to you is, perhaps in this changing, this dynamic environment, as uh, Doc has told us, could there be some additional requirements, maybe even you know, statutory requirements, and are you aware of them? Maybe as we look for different, uh, different sources, uh, of, of our cargo and so on. Are we aware of those uh, requirements? Because for you, as a, as, as a shipper or as a clearing and agent, uh, you know, clearing and forwarding agent, we customers rely on you to advise us. So there's also some advisory uh, service that you uh, give to us. So we'll focus on what are the changing needs of your customers and how can you, so, uh, stakeholders, and how can you support them? And then lastly, I'll talk one or two things about the need for us to embrace digital transformation. Why? Because that's the way of the future. Tip number one, adjust your perspective or adjust your way of doing things or maybe adjust your business plan. So I uh, have put out a picture here and I want to ask this question. What do you see? Please go to the chat box and please tell me what do you see? And I'll be taking in uh, some, 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 some responses. And as we wait, as I wait for your responses, Diana, I'll hand over back to you and perhaps you can read one or two comments that came in through the chat box. Uh, as we give our participants an opportunity to say what they see. Diana, over to you. Uh, thank you, Sarah. And I will start with uh, feedback that we have on uh, on uh, WebEx. Um, so I'll start with... Uh, Naftali. And Naftali says he's a new importer. Uh, he's got uh, market opportunities, but he doesn't have enough capital to import in bulk. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Jackton Omondi also says that uh, big players in the industry have set 60 to 90 day credit period as a standard operating procedure. We are small and we small and mid sized SMEs can't manage this without reliable cash flow. How can the bank assist in this? And then uh, I will quickly go over to um, YouTube where um, uh, the biggest challenge uh, as we are receiving uh, from uh, the participants on YouTube is uh, the biggest challenge as an importer and in supply business at large is lack of finances, getting a loan from the bank using my assets. I think I'd already read that. Uh, we have Jackton Omondi again on uh, YouTube saying, as a clearing and forwarding agent, our biggest challenge uh, is financing importers third party charges and waiting for 60 day credit period. And then uh, we also have feedback uh, on MCOP cash from Flora, where they say when they go to access and secure a loan, it's too little compared to the money they require to pay their suppliers before they can ship the goods. And then uh, Christine Namundi also speaks to troubled cash flow since uh, the pandemic started. Um, Godfrey Odiambo, financing is an issue. And then we have a question from Irene Odiambo, which of course uh, the Cop Bank team will handle during the uh, Q&A session where she's asking, do you link with KRA Customs to facilitate clearing and payment of taxes? Mm. And then, uh, yeah, we have quite a bit of engagement coming from YouTube. I think most of our participants are logged on uh, via YouTube. And then uh, we also have questions on whether LPO financing option is available. And I think, I think some of these questions would be answered uh, during the second part of the presentation when we have uh, Cop Bank coming in to uh, give the options available to assist uh, bridge the financing gap. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you but, so uh, much. To your question, uh, yes. uh, what do you see? So the comments coming in are a glass half full, glass of water, glass with half, uh, half full glass of water, glass of water, half empty, Mm. And then uh, that's uh, YouTube. 
uh, coming back to uh, Webex, halfway glass of water and half glass of water with ice cubes. <laughs> Over to you, Sarah. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Diana, and thank you, our participants. Thank you for those conversations. Uh, Naftali, I hear you. Jackson, I hear you. Flora, we hear you. And we are here to provide those uh, solutions for you, trust me. And uh, it's very interesting. Uh, when you look at that picture, what you see, some people say, I see a glass half full, others say, I see a glass half, half empty. Uh, Naftali says, I see a glass of water with ice cubes and so on. And all those opinions are valid because it's all about what you see. And it's so important for you to see the right thing or to get the right perspective in what you see, because perspective is all about how you, you see, how you understand, how you interpret a situation and what you're going to do about it. Diana, I think I heard you saying that somebody saying uh, something like uh, trying to add on to, 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 you know, when you look at that glass, you can see it is half full or it is half empty. But I think the challenge here for all of us is to try and see how we can fill that glass. I see a glass uh, half filled. Thank you so much, uh, Prudence. And this is exactly what we want to talk about. Why are we even talking about a glass with water and whether it's half full and uh, full or half empty and so on? Because we are going through the COVID-19 pandemic. And in this pandemic, we have you know, it has disrupted the, the pandemic has actually it's a fact it has disrupted the way we have been doing business. And now we are talking about uh, the need to adjust to adapt and to go around uh, uh, this, this, this crisis. So it's all about trying to see how you can fill the glass. What you could say my own business has been, you know, very difficult. And so the million dollar question is, what are you going to do about it? And that's what uh, I think is really important for all of us to focus on. Uh, I want to draw your attention to uh, the words of Bruce Lee. And Bruce Lee is a, a martial arts artist. And I'm sure you, you have heard uh, about him, of course, depending on how old you are. And he gives us some insights or some wisdom about changing times. And because the environment is changing so much, because of COVID has changed, it's con it continues to change, I think we can get some insights from this. He says that the stiffest tree is most easily cracked. The stiffest tree is most easily cracked, while the bamboo or the willow does what? It survives by bending with the wind. What does that statement mean to you? Please go to the chat box and tell me. What does that mean to you? The stiffest tree is most easily cracked, while the bamboo or the willow survives by bending with the wind. What comes to your mind? Please go to the chat box and uh, let, let me know. Uh, Diana, over to you. Um, thank you, Sarah. Um... We have Jackton Omondi, who is very fast in responding. He says adaptability. Uh, we have uh, Steve not adaptable. We have George Serem saying it means we need to be flexible with uh, changing situations. Um, and I see Stephen Gikungu on YouTube says uh, flexibility. Thank you. Thank you so much, Diana. Thank you so much, our participants, for continuing to engage us in this conversation. What are we seeing here? It is important for us, if we are going to survive and also thrive going forward, we need to be adaptable. We need to learn how to bend in the, in the direction of the wind. What is that direction of the wind? What your customer wants and how, what are some of the things that you can do to enhance the way you do business? Prudence, I see you. Resilience. Uh, you know, being ad adaptable, adjusting, and so on. And that's what uh, our focus is on. And I just want to bring your attention to these uh, words here. The fact, uh, yesterday's facts, uh, yesterday's uh, amazing, okay, yesterday's facts are not tomorrow's reality. And I know you've been in business. You've been in business for a long time and you have really succeeded, you know, in, 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 in getting yourself to where you are today. 
But the fact is that what we were doing before, because of the changing environment, the COVID and so on, may not necessarily guarantee your success tomorrow. And so it's so important that we embrace the words of Bruce Lee and we realize that what got us where we are now may not necessarily get us into the future. And that's exactly why we are having this conversation and why I want to share uh, these tips with you. I have left for you a blank box and the question for you is to figure out what can you do to remain profitable. Even if you went to cooperative bank right now and they're here, they're gonna give you a wide range of, of, of products. The issue of profitability, you can never escape it as a business person. And so we want to share with you tips of how to be profitable and how to make adjustments in your business. If you need to scale down, you know, you, did, you need to look at what the priorities are, the costs and so on, look at it in totality. And also not only that, you see, looking at the cost is only just one side of it. There's also the income. And I'll be sharing with you some tips of how you can expand your sources of revenue. Tip number two, it's very important for us uh, as importers and clearing and forwarding agents to understand the different needs of our stakeholders. And who is a stakeholder? A stakeholder is anybody who interfaces or interacts with, a business, with, with your business in one way or another. So for example, that's you in the business, there in the center, and there are people who surround you because nobody operates in a vacuum. There are those who have invested in the business, yourself being uh, number one, I call you investor number zero, zero one. And as you continue, and as you have continued to run your business, and as, you know, because of the nature of your business, because of the amount of monies that we handle in Forex and also in Kenya shillings, we can't survive. It's impossible for you to survive without a helping hand. And this is where a cooperative bank comes in. So that is the lender. That is a person who gives you financial solutions. In fact, I always say your banker is your best friend. But now, if I was to ask you, what do you think their expectations are? You see, we are trying to understand what are the changing needs of our stakeholders. So if I asked you, what do you think uh, is at the top of the mind of a cooperative bank as far as your account is concerned, what would your answer be? It's important that we understand for each of these different uh, categories, management, what are the concerns of management? Uh, what are, you know, the staff and the different anxieties that we are having uh, right now, uh, the customers, whether that customer is a cargo owner, individual shippers, and so on, in terms of uh, suppliers, you know, or everybody in that value chain, uh, what exactly are uh, uh, the, the, the expectations? Are you aware? Regulatory authorities, KRA, KPA, K, uh, Kenya Airports Authority, uh, CABS, and so on, the local community. So it's really important, especially in this time of crisis, that you figure out what is at the top of their mind. And in your communications, I encourage you to oil those uh, you know, com uh, communications and make them effective because that, that's what is critical for your survival and especially during a time of crisis. We say communication is good, but especially during a time of crisis, it is very critical. So what is at the top of the mind of cooperative bank? And even for you, all the investments in your business, the question we're all asking ourselves is, are we gonna lose money? And so you need to, we need to make it our business to see how we can assure uh, the different stakeholders by communicating or, 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 or writing communications to them that calm their fears, that ease their anxieties, management, how are we going to keep the, are we going to continue to run the business we did our 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 our, our strategic plans uh, last year we were all set at the beginning of the of, of of this year for takeoff and then suddenly covid came so how will we continue to run this business and that's why we are borrowing the insights from bruce lee he says you know what you have to bend in the direction of the wind management is charged with the responsibility of making decisions which will guide the rest of the employees on what they're supposed to do. Employees, am I gonna get paid? That's the million dollar question for your staff. Am I gonna be safe for, for, for your customers? You know, uh, the question at the top of their mind is, uh, uh, am I gonna get what I need? 
uh, whenever your customers need something, they come to you. But now the question is, will we be able to get with all these uh, changes that are happening the world over? What about suppliers? Will you still continue to buy from us? You see, the reality is that because of the shift in the business environment, we are also shifting. We're also identifying different uh, people to do business with and so on. So are you still going to continue to buy from us? Are we going to be paid? Are we going to be safe? As we deliver this uh, goods, uh, as, as as we exchange, uh, you know, uh, these goods and so on. So these questions, local community and so on. This is just the second tip that I'm giving you. You need to make sure that you streamline communications where there's an issue, and that's why, like, in fact, part of communication is asking you questions. And you go to the chat box and you tell us, this is what we want. We are listening to you with a big ear so that we can give you solutions that are uh, fit for you. My third tip, my third and last tip is the importance of embracing, embracing a digital transformation. Digital transformation, I know previously you were saying, oh, uh, maybe in analog or something. We have to cross over, embrace digital transformation. I picked out a statement with my, uh, from my interactions with Cooperative Bank and, and, and somebody said, that as long as you can price your product or your service, it doesn't matter whether it's a product, whether it's a service, you can sell it digitally. And maybe the question for you, you see, um, clearing and forwarding is a very specialized business. You know, import is, is, is import. But I want uh, you to open your eyes to see what's going on uh, globally. These statistics as we have them, we took them in, in April, and uh, this, we, we, you know, these are the authoritative figures that we have. And uh, I know the figures are conservative and they have, they have gone up uh, by now, but we can learn something uh, about these numbers that will change our, business, uh, our businesses going forward. When you look at that slide, it shows you a total population of 7.8 billion the world over. And out of those, that 7.8 billion, more than 50% of these people are living in cities. That's the first statistics. The second statistic is about the unique mobile phone users. In fact, here in Kenya, you don't have anywhere you tapale, sokoni, nini, matatu, everywhere. Everybody is using a smartphone. And the numbers indicate to us that globally, we're looking at over 5 billion people, 66% penetration. Why am I telling you this? Because if we're going to embrace digital transformation, I know you're very keen on hearing what solutions Cooperative Bank of Kenya is going to give you so that you can push your business forward. The thing is that you need to expand your, your, your marketplace and there's opportunity for us to do that by going online. Internet users, 4.5% uh, billion, almost 60, in fact, I believe more than 60% uh, penetration, people who use phones, smartphones, in one way or another to ask Professor Google a question or something. And you know what? There are people who get into the net looking for a clearing and forwarding agent. My question or challenge to you is, are they gonna find you? If I wanted to import some goods, where do you think I'll go? I'll not rely on networks. I'll not call Dorcas and ask her, Dorcas, do you know? Y yes, I could. But the kind of uh, world space or playing uh, field that we have at the moment is that before somebody thinks of calling Dorcas to ask her, please forward me, uh, you know, recommend somebody to me, they will go into the internet. So the challenge for us is, can you be found there? Social media, active social media users, 3.8, almost 4 billion people. And I think we've seen this. I mean, we talk about, you know, addictions to the internet and, and, and so on. When somebody wakes up in the morning, what's the first thing they do? They pick up their phone and they look for one thing or another. The question is, are they going to see you and the products are that, uh, you know, the services that you're offering? This slide here just shows that shopping trends, people are now buying online. And I believe this is of interest to you. You can see that there are red bars in all uh, the sections. Why? Because whatever it is that you, 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 are, you are assisting to bring in, there is demand online. Remember, online. So there's a new uh, a space uh, for us to, 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 to get involved. My challenge to you when you think about digital transformation is number one, you need to move your business online. 
we have seen even construction, people are moving their businesses online. And the question is, why not you? So I think uh, I would encourage you, look for opportunities to sell, to market your organization on the internet. I have seen amazing things, even just in WhatsApp groups of people saying, look, we're importing, we're bringing in this, we're, you know, and they show us the pictures and so on, and people are buying and people are making, you know, money and so on. Why not you? When somebody needs to make a decision, if they can see you, then the chances of you do, them doing business with you or buying from you are increased. But if we can't see you, you're not visible, we can't see you. So when we're making financial decisions, decisions to buy and so on, we can find you. So these are just some tips. I know there's a process of you know, trying to, to get uh, your shipment from, from China, from Japan, from Dubai, and so on. And there's a whole process, you people are in the support chain, you know, in, in, in the value chain, trying to make that possible in one way or another, in, you know, clearance, customs, and so on. But at the end of the day, you know what? If your customers are not able to push their products, do you think they will engage? Do you think they will buy more? Do you think they will engage you? So it's a ripple cycle uh, for all of us. So those are the tips that I wanted to share with you. And I want to stop there. And I want to hand over uh, the meeting back to Dorcas, who will tell us more about uh, the products. I did hear that the questions are coming in. We are uh, capturing those questions. And we are going to answer not some, but all of them at the tail end of this presentation. Without further ado, Dorcas, back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you so, so very much, uh, Sarah. That was really, really exciting and um, I, I mean, really excellent uh, presentation just to take through our customers uh, uh, some of the things. And um, I, I like, I really like the presentation around um, going digital. I like the presentation around opening our eyes and looking and seeing the very many opportunities that are out there. And um, I believe, uh, you know, with a great partnership, of course, we will be able to see such, uh, such uh, opportunities. Um, yes, as Cooperative Bank, then what is our commitment? Even as we open our eyes, uh, we have uh, had a couple of questions that are coming through and uh, saying, yes, opportunities are there but uh, most people are feeling they do not have the necessary capital, they do not have the necessary facilitation. So I think it's to ask ourselves as cooperative bank, what we have to offer. And I want to recognize uh, Moses Getao, who I did not recognize earlier. Uh, I can see uh, my other team members like uh, Margaret uh, Murage, and um, we are all here to support and say, there are a couple of things a cooperative bank is putting in place to ensure that we are indeed supporting our customers and we are indeed working with them so that then as they get the opportunities, we support them with the necessary tools and with the necessary financing to be able to meet their obligations. Uh, therefore, as a cooperative bank, uh, what is our commitment? Our commitment, and uh, we have all uh, been seeing, and it, I mean, it has been all uh, around us. Uh, for those of us who have uh, been our customers, we have continued to offer additional financing uh, so that uh, we can be able to boost their uh, their stock levels or their or their business. Uh, and for them to be able to meet the obligations. The other thing we have uh, very well done as cooperative bank is uh, to ask ourselves, our customers are struggling during this season. How can we restructure? How can we give them a relief uh, so that uh, we restructure their facilities and give them a time to be able to um, or to be able to uh, go through this season. So we are giving uh, holidays, uh, loan holidays, um, uh, to ensure that then as as uh, as business uh, comes up, then we have given you an opportunity to be able to build business afresh. 
uh, uh, and of course, uh, that one we what what is required for those uh, businesses that are feeling they are struggling is you request or you go to your branch so that you can talk to your branch manager or your uh, or your relationship manager, and out of that they can give you the correct uh, I mean the the correct structure. The other thing we 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 also are doing is having dedicated relationship managers uh for our msme customers to ensure that we are supporting them in all the areas whether it is the area of um borrowing whether it is in the area of um you know even uh, in the area of uh, trying to show them uh, some of the, the the new things that the bank is doing and uh, as you have heard uh, sarah put it very well going digital uh, are there are new ways of uh, making payment or even receiving payment so your relationship manager will be able to give you consultancy around that um the the, the issues around where you can get in through the, our online portal where we uh post all the trainings and uh, all the communication that is necessary for you and i will uh, if you allow me, I will just request Moses, uh, who has uh, joined us, to just take us through some of uh, some of um, uh, uh, the, the things that we are uh, we are expecting, especially for our MSMEs. Before I can take us through uh, the areas of uh, trade finance or the areas of uh, support for importers and even uh, support for our our, our our clearing and shipping agents. Uh, so Moses, if you're on the call, maybe kindly I give you a minute or two uh, to just talk on the commitment we are giving our customers. Moses? Okay. Uh, looks like uh, Moses is... Uh, is not with us, uh, but we can continue. Of course, uh, webinars is the other item that we are really working to ensure that uh, uh, we are training our customers, and this is one of them. As uh, Sarah put, we have had a couple of them, and I am sure they have been very, very educative. In terms of uh, CSR, uh, uh, for, our, uh, for, uh, for most of us, we saw we contributed 100 million in cash, uh, which we gave to the uh, Ministry of Health to help in especially facilitating um, um, uh, to especially facilitate uh, buying of uh, protective kits, that is the PPEs, and of course uh, ventilators as the country gets to handle the situation as it were. Uh, Sarah, we can go to the next. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Moses, have you come back? Uh, looks like, I'm yes, there. Moses. I'm so Sorry, thank you, Moses. Uh, just uh, requesting you to, um, to give us a word or two around our commitment, especially on our MSME access to finance. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Dorcas, and uh, good, uh, is it afternoon, good morning, my customers, MSME customers, participants for this CoBank uh, and uh, IFC webinar, good morning. Now, uh, th thank you, thank you, Sarah, thank you, Dorcas, I was listening in, and uh, I think uh, in terms of the commitments, Dorcas has taken us through the commitments that uh, the, the bank has offered for, for, our, for, for our customers, especially at this time of COVID. And more so the issues of funding, the relationship management, and the information. I think she has talked about that. But, but uh, there, there is always a, an entry point in, in every banking relationship, which perhaps is more important than uh, is more important now. And I take us through ourselves the entry point in terms of this relationship for for for, for those who are not banking with us is uh, how then do you access uh, financing as an MSME? The entry point is that you need to have. Uh, what we call an MSME package account, and this is packaged into three account into three into three packages. 
Number one, we have those who are in micro, who are micro enterprises, those who are sort of starting up, coming up, and uh, with an annual turnover of about 10 million. For those kind of customers, we do have an entry point which is called a, go, a bronze package. For the next next category, uh, who are a bit established, and uh, we categorize we categorize them as small enterprises. We come, we, we have uh, with a turnover of between 10 million and uh, annual turnover of between 10 million and 100 million. We have the silver package, and the next category is the, the slightly raja, slightly raja, raja MSME, what you call the medium enterprises with the turnovers of 100 million to 500 million. And for this kind of customer, we have a gold package. All those three packages are current accounts. And just to maybe maybe unpack the, 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 what what comes with each package is to say each and every if each and every MSME customer will have basic needs for, 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 for financing. The first need for financing is working capital. The day-to-day -day running of your business. This is this comes in to say, I want to purchase stock. I want to, to buy raw materials if, 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 I'm, if, I'm, if I'm a manufacturer. I want to do expansion maybe into the factory, into the into the into into the into the into the hospital if you are if, if in, 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 a, in a hospital. I want to pay my supplier so that they keep supplying to me. I think that's what we call working the, 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 the normal working capital requirements for 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 for, for, for an, an MSME. I want to pay salaries. Those are the normal daily working capital requirements. The second need is when you have investment capital. And I think I'll also share what investment capital is when you are buying an asset. You want a motor vehicle, you want uh, a property, you want uh, you want uh, you, you want uh, a house, maybe maybe for business, uh, commercial, or even your residential house. That is what we call investment capital. So, so those will be the two basic needs that uh, that you'll be meeting. With these three packages, you qualify for you qualify from from cooperative bank. You qualify for those two those two basic those two needs that we are talking of the the working capital needs, the day to day working capital needs, and the investment capital needs. That is why you want to buy an, a motor vehicle, a machinery. Some equipment, uh, some houses, or what, or, or what have you. So, so under a bronze package on working capital, which is a daily need, you, it it goes with a an a secured limit, a limit that you don't ask for any security, up to six hundred thousand. And the silver package, which we talked of the the, the, the the small enterprises, it goes with an unsecured limit of up to six million. And uh, and and uh, the gold package, it goes with an unsecured limit of up to ten million. Of course, this is subject to qualification because you have to meet the, the criteria. It, the, the, the packages also come with bundled solutions. And I said all of them are current accounts. So each of those packages has a checkbook. So in case you have to pay your suppliers, you can use a checkbook. Each of those packages comes with M collection. Each of those packages comes with M collection that helps you in terms of payment and, and collection for, for your funds. Each of those packages comes with M pop cash. Each of those packages comes with COP online. That is, um, that is uh, the, the internet banking from cooperative bank. When you go to merchant banking, the POS, each of those packages comes with, 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 with merchant banking. And I think a critical one, which is a, a mode of payment uh, now, an acceptable mode of payment is Lipa and Pesa. Each of those, for, 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 for when you are on each of those packages, you are able to terminate your receipts on Lipa and Pesa directly into your COP bank, real time. Into a co-bank account, so you can directly, uh, immediately terminate all receipts that all payments that you are getting through the Panama Pesa into your co-bank account, and maybe move payments from there. And then Cop Cash would help you now also move in terms of in and in and out of account. So it's facilitated with the uh, those payment solution, payment and collection solutions, just to help you number one aggregate all your payments, aggregate all the collections that you are making from your business into your account. But the differentiator now is the unsecured limit of, uh, of, of 600, 6 million and, and 10 million, as I talked of, or, 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 as, 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 I, as I alluded to earlier. The other thing is that all these three packages have an insurance, free director's insurance cover. And I think it's important to mention this because this is free, fully paid for by the bank. If you're in the, any of those packages, an active, if you're in an active uh, bronze package, you have 100 million cover, free pay, fully paid by the bank. If you're in silver package, you have a, a, a director's uh, a personal accident cover of up to 500,000. And on gold package, you have a, a director's uh, a cover of up to 
one million Kenya shillings. I, I think those, that is the entry point. So if you have to go then to, to the next in terms of the relationship, the borrowing, the entry point is the, the package accounts. I, I think I would want to add their dockers so that uh, I give you the opportunity now to cover the to cover the, the, the trade finance solutions that come with those packages. Thank you. Thank you so thank you so very much, uh, Moses. Uh, really excellent and um, uh, uh, very well put. Uh, yes, we continue to see the support that we are giving our customers. So we go quickly through the trade finance solutions, uh, Sarah. So yes, um, um, as uh, we had, uh, most of us were uh, worried about uh, some of the things uh, the bank is doing, especially in ensuring that uh, we bring them back uh, to business. Uh, of course, there are those who are already uh, have already uh, been in business and they are continuing. Then we are asking ourselves, how can we enhance? How can we facilitate you? to even expand your businesses. And of course, there are those of us who would want to even penetrate new markets. How can we en enable you penetrate or expand even beyond the boundaries uh, of, of, of our country? Uh, there are people who would want to penetrate to Ethiopia. There are people who would want to penetrate to Tanzania. There are people who would even want to penetrate to Congo. How is the bank going to facilitate them? So uh, when it comes to trade finance solutions, as uh, Moses has well put it, is a way of facilitating trade. So as a bank, we want to facilitate you trade more. We want to facilitate you uh, either increase your, your stocks. We want to facilitate you uh, be able to uh, bring in that, um, uh, that consignment from whichever part of the of of the of the globe, it could be China, it could be UK, it could be South Africa. We have solutions that will facilitate you do that. The other area that we facilitate also is in the area of uh, people who are already doing exports. Uh, people want to export to Tanzania. People want to ex uh, export to Rwanda. People want to export to China. People want to export their fresh produce or even flowers to the Netherlands. Again, we come in there as a bank, all that. And uh, just to start us off, um, some of the trade finance solutions we use are what we call letters of credit. Uh, letters of credit, of course, is um, an instrument that um, guarantees you to your to your to your suppliers or even to whoever you are importing from, and uh, what we do as a bank, we come, we get into your shoes, and give our commitment that we are going to make payment on your behalf. Uh, so, uh, and out of that, then we are able to facilitate for you to be able to get whatever whatever goods you want to get or whatever supplies you want to get, without necessarily having to pay cash in advance. Uh, because again, remember, in these times when you do not know the person on the other end, we want to mitigate you against the risk of loss. We want to mitigate you against the risk that even whatever you are bringing in could come and maybe it's def uh, it, it's faulty or it doesn't meet the uh, the, the required um, specifications or in terms of quantity and even in terms of quality. So a letter of credit will give you that opportunity to be able to bring in a consignment or goods that meets all those kind of parameters. We also have uh, other uh, solutions like uh, bank guarantees. Again, when we're talking about uh, bank guarantees, we're talking about guarantees that will um, facilitate you in the various areas. Whether you're doing a bidding, for example, for people who are already suppliers. I know in this forum, we, we have uh, people who have been doing clearing and forwarding for the, for the government. And uh, every beginning of the year, you have to tender. We also have suppliers here who import goods and, of course, uh, supply to the government. But always the entry point is bidding or tendering for that business. 
uh, we have a very uh, a good package for, for such like customers uh, because what we do is that we allow you bid bonds of up to 5 million, which are really unsecured. And again, depending on the relationship we have with your business, uh, we have with you just like um, uh, uh, Moses put there in earlier. If you are in one of those packages and you can qualify for even up to 10 million, it's something that we can have a discussion and see how we can be able to extend even the bank guarantees uh, to you. The other kind of guarantee again is uh, what we call a credit guarantee. Uh, this is for the people who are supplying um, um, uh, to maybe different markets and they want a guarantee from a, manf a manufacturer would like a guarantee from them so that they can be extended, they can extend credit, goods on credit. And uh, here again, we have uh, people of course, who are either in, uh, in oil industry, people who are wholesalers, people who are doing uh, goods in bulk, and uh, because of that, then for, for the manufacturer to extend the credit to you, they want a bank guarantee. And we come in there and we are able to give you a guarantee that uh, fits your needs. Uh, the other kind of uh, type of guarantee that we will see in this area of um, uh, sup uh, supply is uh, what we call, sorry, in this area of um, either whether you're, in a, uh, you're a clearing agent or you're in imports, is a guarantee we call a performance guarantee. For those of us who have worked with the government, the government will want to be sure that, yes, you will perform. Even when they are contracting you to do the um, uh, clearing and forwarding, they will want to be sure that you can perform. Again, here we give you a performance guarantee, which again, we put ourselves in your shoes and, and, and confirm to the government that indeed you are going to perform. Uh, finally, we have uh, what we call documentary collections. Uh, this is for the people who are in imports and you have built a relationship with especially some of uh, the, uh, your suppliers on the other side. So what they do is that they will send you documents and once they send you documents, the documents come to our bank. We hold those documents until when you can make the payment or we hold that uh, uh, those documents until the time when you want to make clearing of those goods. And because they normally have um, uh, 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 conditions as how we shall, uh, we shall release them, what we normally do is that we will have a discussion with you, whether you are able to pay now, we, 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 we release against your payment, in case you're not able to pay today and you still want to clear your goods, we can extend a facility to you, what we call a post-import finance facility, which uh, goes for between uh, 30 to 90 days. And this enables you to, to clear your goods from the port. Once you have cleared your goods, you are able to deliver them or you are able to also sell them. And uh, by, the, by the time you're getting to the 90 days, you have already either been paid and therefore the bank gives you that opportunity to be able to get goods, uh, sell them until when you can be able to get the payment and uh, make the payment. So we give a relief using a, a facility we call a post import finance. Again, at the time of payment, remember some of uh, the importations you will be doing, uh, you will require to pay using the, for, uh, the a foreign currency that is uh, uh, you know, designated for that country. If, for example, you are importing from Europe, you will be required to get some euros. If you are uh, paying uh, a, a supplier in US, you will get a US dollars or you require US dollars. If you're doing uh, China, you will again require some uh, Chinese yuan. Again, here we normally offer very competitive pricing to ensure that, yes, you can be able to meet your obligation and you can be able to pay using whatever currency that you have to pay. Then I go to uh, some of the questions that you asked around how can the bank facilitate or how are we collaborating with KRA so that we can ensure that, uh, yes, those goods have come, their duty have been paid. 
So in this case, what we normally do is that uh, yes, once you once you, re, uh, you you get to know you're doing an importation and you know you have a gap in terms of you do not have money to settle your your KRA charges at that point. What we normally do is we offer what we call an import duty finance. Uh, what will this uh, help you with? It will support you to settle those uh, duties and even the clearing charges and uh, get your goods, um, either deliver them to wherever you're supplying or even uh, sell them. We give a period of between, again, 30 to 90 days, depending on your payment or on, your, on, your, on the cycle of you being able to convert the goods to cash. And uh, out of that, then you're able to settle once you get the, the, the once you get, uh, once you get your uh, the, your payment from wherever you are, um, from wherever, for example, you're you're supplying. The other important bit is um, uh, the stock financing. In stock financing, I think again, uh, it could either be local or it could be uh, goods that are coming in. Um, you know, very pretty much um, a substitute of what we do in LCs. And uh, here again, we will facilitate you get you get the stocks either through uh, supply chain or distributor finance solutions to ensure that you are well stocked at any one point. I know as we get uh, towards the season of Christmas, the demand is high and you want to uh, keep your stock levels at the right uh, position again, this solution will support you and it helps you match your, uh, your, your payments and, 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 and whatever, whatever, sorry, whatever payments that come through. So it doesn't uh, give you, uh, as opposed to an OD uh, or a, an, an overdraft facility where uh, you're not able to match whatever you're selling and whatever facilities you're getting from the bank. But either way, uh, and depending again on the business needs, we can be able to give either an OD or a stock financing facility. Uh, finally, somebody asked a question around, yes, they have that uh, motor vehicle or they have that equipment they want to import from out there. How can we facilitate them? Again, I did say there is a solution we call uh, an LC. Once that equipment has come in and you're not able to pay for it immediately, we can convert it to an asset finance. Uh, why do we do this? Because we do realize that, uh, yes, um, when you're buying a, a CapTex item or a capital item, you may not be able to convert it to cash immediately. Maybe it is, it's to use as uh, to manufacture or to, or to process. So you will need a bit of time uh, between one one year to three years to to to, to be able to uh, to get back the uh, the return. So again, we can be able to structure. We start with a letter of credit. Then once we get the the equipment, we can convert it to an asset finance. It's a discussion we we'll, we we can have and see how can we support. Uh, finally, when goods are in transit they do require insurance. And this we call marine insurance. Again, as um, my colleague Moses said, it is an area that we would want to support you with uh, so that we, 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 we give you a marine insurance uh, to be able to cover your goods in transit in case of any damage, in case of any breakage, in case they are even stolen, then we, you are covered, and you, 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 you can always be compensated at any one time. So, what are the solutions we offer? Uh, of course, um, uh, Sarah did mention that we have to ask ourselves how can we go digital. There are those of us who are in uh, FMCG. There are those of us who would want to be paid. Uh, by their customers either through card and online. Again, here we offer solutions around e-commerce, which support you so that then your customers can uh, can 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 order goods online and they can also be able to pay you online. Um, salary processing, I'm sure for most of us who are already uh, uh, you know in business, you have employees, and again you can be able to process salaries 
using our robust platforms, whether it is COP online, uh, to be able to process payment for care, to process uh, payment for, for salaries. And the beauty of this is that you are able to keep record of whatever payment you make. And even at any future date, you can always go back and, uh, and produce a receipt without necessarily having to file min most of these, uh, these uh, receipts in a folder that may get lost or may get damaged over time. But uh, the, the beauty of this, you can be able to store the, those, all those payments somewhere where you can even um, uh, get uh, to, to, to see them at a later stage. Um, I, at this point, I don't know, Diana, if we have any questions that I have not addressed and uh, if, uh, if we can then um, uh, put, um, put it up for, for a Q&A. But before I can uh, put it up for Q&A, of course, somebody will ask, uh, as we offer these kind of uh, solutions, uh, what are the requirements? Uh, some of the requirements, of course, are we need to do the necessary KYC. So you uh, fill in our um, application forms, uh, which are pretty simple to fill. And uh, of course, our teams on the ground are always very ready to support you in filling out these forms. Uh, secondly, um, it's important to realize that uh, the collateral security that is required and what we do in such cases, because we realize Collateral is a big challenge. We have partnered with uh, various um, uh, organizations to ensure that we can be able to cover you up to a certain level where you go beyond your MSME uh, package. Out of that, we can then look at other solutions that will support you so that you have sufficient collateral. So in such cases, then you will only pay 50% of, um, of the collateral. You give us 50% of your collateral. It could be land, it could be cash, it could be turtles or whatever collateral that is agreeable to the bank. And then the other 50%, we are able to cover using uh, insurance cover. Um, at that point, I would uh, maybe request uh, we, we go to question and answer so that it can be more engaging and we can be able to address some of the things that you know you feel we need to address. Over to you, uh, Diana, for Q&A. Uh, thank you very much, Dorcas. I'll start with uh, the questions and feedback coming through WebEx and then uh, move on to YouTube. So we have um, feedback from Aden Abdi Serrar, and he says that they have a challenge with their dollar account where it's not responsive to SMS alert to confirm transaction. And this has been a challenge because they have to go to the bank to confirm any transaction on the dollar account. He says uh, this is unlike in their shilling account where it works well. But for dollar, it doesn't seem to be working. So I would request that probably Peter Ndumia takes a note of this and they can address this with Aiden Abdi Serrar. And then uh, we have I, some of the questions that uh, have been posed uh, in the chat box have already been answered as we went through the presentation. So I'll uh, probably pick uh, the areas where we have specific questions coming from the participants um that have not been addressed uh, by uh, Dorcas as she went through the presentation and also by Moses as uh, we went through the presentation so we have um Collins Akello and then Collins says uh with the mention of relationship managers could they please shortlist more organizations to be pre-qualified for LPO financing for instance now I have two LPOs that need financing and my good bank, Cop Bank, has nothing to offer me at all. All I am told is to borrow against my chattels, which I have hardly enough since I just finished college last year, but at least I have more than four good clients who import frequently. Kindly assist. So okay, probably yeah. we could respond to that before... Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, there's one more from Webex where the question is, can you convert LC to stock financing? Um, 
As for the case of asset finance, and I think you had already responded to this, but if you want to add additional comments, you are free to do so. Um, and then Naftali Ogana is also asking, you have talked about flexible security. How flexible is, is it for the case of 500,000 credit facilities? For, for my case, I have none as listed. Over to you, Dorcas. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so very much, uh, um, uh, Diana. And uh, uh, thank you, Aiden. Uh, sorry, I didn't uh, pick the other names. Uh, in terms of uh, some of uh, what, what we are doing, especially on the LPO financing, allow me to say that, uh, yes, this is an area that we already started uh, supporting our customers. And uh, one of the things that we do, especially looking at your trading history, looking at uh, when uh, you started um, you know, supplying and looking at who your suppliers are, we are able to structure something around that facilitates you to deliver as well as uh, either make a commitment to your supplier. That way we are able to uh, guard you against uh, very high interest rates. So we could give uh, what we call a guarantee or a commitment to your supplier. They supply and then we make payment once they make uh, the payment come. So um, again, it's it's an issue of structuring and we can, uh, I, 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 I request that uh, maybe we can pick your number uh, so that we can be able to or, you know, have a discussion and see how we can support you on that. It's LPO financing is something we do. Number two, somebody asked a question around LC, a conversion of LC to stock. I did say that when you are, for example, uh, uh, importing goods, sometimes you may realize that, yes, you have e uh, issued an LC, but by the time the goods come, you do not have money because you need to convert those goods into cash. So what we normally do is that, uh, yes, we agree on what I have said, a post-import finance, where we are able uh, to extend a further facility of up to 90 days to you. And again, it depends on what market you're in. It is between 30 to 90 days. So we convert an LC into stock financing. And uh, finally, in terms of, um, I, I, I didn't mention uh, something around um, uh, KRA customs bonds. That is something that we normally do. We give uh, KRA customs bonds, which are normally valid for between uh, one year to three years. And again, this is a discussion that we can be able to take up with individuals uh, because again, some of them will require certain structuring. Flexibility in our securities, yes, that I said it is there, and that is why we have given uh, the various um, uh, the various structures. Uh, there's one where we we only take 50% of your security. There's another one where we are willing to look at what chattels you have, and then of course there's land and property. So I hope that addresses. And in case of uh, a question, maybe uh, Diana, you can always. I pick the number and I will also be able to uh, shoot my number at this point um, so that then we can uh, be able to have a further engagement thereafter. Maybe Dorcas, if, if I may chip in briefly also, in terms okay. of, uh, there is a gentleman who talked about the Dora account in terms of SMS. I think we've picked that and uh, we'll, be, we'll be engaging him off. Uh, let, let me also talk about uh, these kind of customers here. The, the kind of customers that you are talking to today have a lot of needs for foreign currency. And I, I think, uh, let me say, we do have uh, foreign currency accounts for, for the major, major currencies. So, so further to the Kenya shillings account, you can operate the foreign currency account. And number two is that uh, to exchange both into the account and uh, maybe cash on conversion of, of currencies, uh, and I think that is also available into the bank, uh, in the bank, sorry, and also the issue of um, of transfers, foreign currency transfers, if you have to make uh, any, 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 any swift transfers, we do that for for, 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 for you as a customer. So, so just, just to mention that uh, those, those services are also available to, to, to you as our customers in the bank. I think uh, the, the, the issue of, of security, let me say security in any banking relationship, 
Security comes in second. The primary, uh, the primary thing is uh, the, 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 the one of us, the customer, the banking that, uh, that you bring into the bank, and that determines now the qualification. So security comes in second, uh, sec uh, secondary, and uh, I know DOC has, has covered the, the, the issues of securities. So, so for any relationship, I think security comes in secondary. Number three is to say that the banker-customer relationship, and I think uh, this, this I, I know Sarah may have said it, banker-customer relationship is more or less like doctor-patient relationship. And that's why for, for us as a bank, we have, we, have, we have mapped every customer with a relationship manager that you need to tell or to, to, to maybe let that, that person, that your branch manager, let your relationship manager know your business in and out. And until they understand your business, those are the people, that, and, and until they understand their business, your business, they may not be able to, to, to maybe prescribe the appropriate solution for you. Just, as, just, just, just like a doctor who may not understand your, who may not pick out your diagnosis, they may not be able to give, the, give you the right prescription. So it's important as a, as a customer, you walk the journey with, with, with your banker, with your relationship manager, with your with your with, with your branch manager so that they are able to present your request based on based based on the on, on the facts of facts of facts of the business so 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 i would i would really advocate for that kind of relationship between you as a uh, as, as an msmb with your customer just to ensure that they are they are they are able to walk through with you finally as number four what is a call to action as as we engage on this i, I know we'll be coming to those to, 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 to maybe a few questions that uh, diana you pick but what is a call to action? And as, as, we, as we leave this, this webinar, what are, we, what are we saying as a bank? And I think what I'm, I'm asking is that if you do not have an MSME, an MSME package account, please visit your branch and open an MSME or you be an MSME package account or you'll be able to get appropriate advice from, 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 your, from, your, from, from, from the branch manager or from the relationship manager. So please ensure you have that. You have that that visibility and uh, engage your branch manager and uh, your relationship manager. Uh, number two, as you as you onboard on that package account, uh, ensure you also register on the payment solutions and transaction solutions. What do these do for you? Number one, they help you do corrections in terms of the in terms of the payment that uh, you'll be receiving from customers. I think you have moved more electronic. Uh, most of the now banks will tell you over ninety percent of the transactions are being done. On alternative channels, so the corrections that need to come maybe not be cash. So as ensure if it's Ripa and Pesa, you have been able to register and terminate it to, uh, to your package account. Is with them correction you have registered, so you are able to correct. If it's uh, if it's uh, a POS, the bank will provide for you that POS for free. So ensure you register and uh, on those payment and transaction solutions. I think then number three is to say if you have those short-term needs that uh, dockers have covered, I think I may have also talked about them. Ensure you also discuss those needs with your branch manager as a, and a relationship manager. So, so that will be critical for you to say, what do I need? And uh, Doc has mentioned the issue of to say, this is the season that uh, most of us are importing. This is the season that most of us are stocking. Is there a need that the bank can finance you? Please raise that to the branch manager, your relationship manager. They should be able to advise you on, on the funding. And I think uh, last race to say, the session we have run is just, an, is just uh, to, 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 to to, 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 to what that the engagement that you have been having may not be, may not have really covered all the all the bank solutions. So we are requesting that you engage your branch manager for more information on financing solutions, especially for the importers and the exporters. So are, we have several solutions. We may not have captured everything. We may not have been able to articulate everything as as it is. So let's have that engagement between, between the branch manager yourself, the branch manager, and uh, also the relationship manager, so that they can uh, they can advise you on the most appropriate appropriate solutions. Uh, are there any other questions that we could pick on, Diana? I, I think that was my call to action. Uh, yes, uh, Moses, and thank you very much. If I could uh, quickly go to YouTube. Uh, we have uh, several questions which I will read out uh, for you and Docas to address. And Irene Odiambo is asking, do you link with KRA Customs to facilitate clearing and payment of taxes? And then we have uh, Joe Muli, I believe your question on uh, whether uh, Copbank uh, gives LPO financing has been answered. And then we have a question from um, 
Joe Muli. Joe Muli is asking, what alternatives do you have for agricultural input service providers that import of product or upon selling locally to large end users? LPO financing, that question mark. And then he also goes on to say alternative financing at import could be we get financing and uh, surety slash guarantee be the agricultural input, input goods being imported. And then we have Julius Kabari who says that uh, the any purchase below USD, Euro, or uh, GBP, that is British pounds a thousand, is so exorbitant, hurting the small margins that as SME we expect. Can this be reviewed? And then um, we also have uh, Felix Murray who's asking, Will the bank be able to design a product for importers whereby you finance the invoice value and KRA duty with one bullet payment for interest and principal loan in an agreed period of time? And then uh, if I can take maybe two or three more, um, Elijah Mutunga is asking, if I need to import, do you have a panel of agents you can refer me to to assure that I do not fall on the wrong agent's uh, hands. And then, uh, Dorcas Njenga, I believe you've been answered uh, through the presentation where you're saying our current challenge is delayed payment by government institutions, that is hospitals and universities. How can the bank help in terms of products like advanced uh, payment guarantees? And I believe Dorcas covered that in the presentation. And maybe I would just add that for the participants who joined us late, um, Copbank will be sharing the presentation with all the participants. Um, so you don't need to worry about um, missing the previous sessions. You'll be able to go through the presentation and uh, we'll share the contacts of uh, the bank, uh, the branch managers, you'll be able to get in touch with them to get further insights if need be. And I think... Uh, Agnes, maybe the last uh, uh, question from Agnes Mugoya. Hello, I have a current secured loan with Cooperative Bank. I wish to acquire further unsecured finance under the silver package. What are the requirements? Agnes, your question is noted and I will request the team uh, to get in touch with you directly. Um, Wilson Travels is asking, if I want to access your tailor-made solutions, do I walk into any Cop Bank branch? or you can share contact or which bank or which branch are you located in. I think uh, Moses had already touched on this. You can walk into any branch and uh, speak to the branch manager, but also alternatively, we will be sharing the contacts uh, of the team on this call. Thank you very much. That's it from uh, YouTube. Over to you, Moses and uh, Odokas to address the questions. Uh, thank you. Thank you so very much, Diana. I will go first and then uh, Moses uh, will take uh, some of the areas that uh, maybe he may want to uh, enhance. Uh, in terms of uh, linking up with KRA or collaborating with KRA, as I said, uh, what we normally do is uh, once we once you already know what your duties are like, once you have gotten the manifest, what we do is that we we uh we uh you you get in touch with us and we can be able to process uh payments to carry however let me put it this way uh, remember all this time your goods are already at the port so we wouldn't want a situation where there is a delay because of the uh, you know the processing uh, of the facility so we normally say the moment you realize you want to uh, to do importation it's important you have a discussion with your relationship manager and tell them quite in advance that yes, as I'm doing this importation, I do foresee a situation where I may not be having import, uh, sorry, money to pay for either the duty import or the taxes that need to be paid for. So at that point, when we are we are processing for you the facility, we process for we process it well in advance. And once the goods uh, get here, it becomes very easy for us to to do the to to to, to make the payment to carry. So it's always good you come to us well in advance, 
uh, before the goods uh, arrive at the port so that you do not incur any damage costs. Because people wait until the last minute and by the time you are processing, it would take one or two days, which now you, you will already have started incurring some damage. So to avoid that, have a discussion with your relationship manager well in advance, even before you start the journey of importing, so that we can incorporate that in the initial application. Uh, somebody did ask uh, if we can be able to do a bullet, and that's what I'm talking about. Once you know you're doing an importation, you know this is the, the, the cost of goods, uh, at the point that these things are coming to carry, because remember, you will be given an IDF well, well in advance, and they can be able to at least calculate and see this is the component that you will be paying to carry in terms of import duty or taxes. We are able to uh, incorporate all that in the initial application, and then you can pay it at a future date once uh an agreed date that we, we we agree between us and yourself once you have already sold your goods uh then there was a question around do we have a panel of uh, agents yes we do um and and of course in most cases we will give it uh, give that panel to you if you are already working uh, or rather you're doing facilities with us uh so we will be saying these are the the, the agents that we we normally use as a bank or we use for our customers and we will share it with you again your relationship manager will be able to uh, advise you on that uh finally there was a question around um agricultural finance for import inputs um there are two levels uh, that i look at there if you're importing the inputs uh of course there is uh, the facility for either LCs. Now, if you're doing or you're buying your inputs from your local agrovets or you're buying them from um, an agrovet where we have a relationship, uh, there are various facilities we will use just like Moses said. There is the uh, import of uh, stock financing, which we can give you, or the farm inputs, which again, you can be able to access and this also just uh, once you have a discussion with our experts on the on the ground that the relationship managers or the branch manager, they will be able to give you a breakdown on what it is. So it, I, I, I'm, I'm putting it very broadly because I do not have the specifics, but with the specifics, the relationship manager will be able to give you a better you know, answer in terms of is it uh, an LC you need, is it an LPO you need, or is it an input, uh, sorry, an, an, uh, a farm input, input facility you need, or is it stock financing that you need? So uh, since you're able to have that discussion with the branch manager, once you visit them, they will now be able to break it down for you and it will be much, much easier for us to process. I don't know if anything I missed out on uh, Moses. Um, I think yeah, I've addressed the questions, yeah. Maybe just to add on to, there are two questions that, there are two maybe comments or requests from Agnes. Agnes talked of uh, of uh, having a secured facility. Agnes, you already have a relationship. I would request you visit that relationship person and they will be able to review your account and advise on the appropriate solution because I had I had you saying that you have, a, you have a secured facility with us. I think that relationship manager, the branch manager should be able to, to, to advise you uh, on, on uh, the appropriate solution. Wilson talked of uh, where where do you about uh, uh, the branch, and I, I think just uh, as uh, as Diana said, any any of the branches, uh, and uh, you be able to talk to a branch manager or the relationship manager. Any of our branches, we are all, the services are all across all our branches. We have one six branches. Choose on the appropriate branch, the branch that is close to your business or the branch that is is close to your, to yourself. That is where you you will be able to engage that person, and we have um, a branch manager and a relationship manager in every other every other branch. So feel free to visit on any of those any of those branches. We have also shared our contacts on um, on the chat box, for, both for trade finance and for the relationship managers in head office and uh, and and the business banking, in case you want to reach out to to ourselves. I, I think uh, that is it, uh, Dorcas.
thank you very much, uh, Moses. Um, I hope, Diana, we have uh, covered all the questions. Yes, you've pretty much covered all the questions. I will just look through YouTube quickly to make sure no other, no further questions came through. Oh, uh, look, maybe a comment, a comment from yes. Julius Kabari. He says the reason we raise some of these issues here is because the RMs and branch managers are unable to give solutions. We believe in this forum we are dealing with decision makers. <laughs> And we also have Michael who says a good discussion. I have learned a lot from this live forum. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Diana. Um, and uh, thank you for those uh, comments. Indeed, um, we we take the feedback, and um, I am I am I am sure, uh, as I said. Uh, what we have done, uh, we have really empowered our teams on the, on the ground. But as uh, Moses has again said, of course, there is uh, merit in us uh, sharing our contact and we have already shared our contacts uh, so that in case you feel you also want to get that extra support, then uh, we, we are at, uh, uh, I mean, we are just a call away and we can be able to address some of the questions that uh, you know are coming across. So Diana, um, uh, maybe as we share the, the as we, we share this uh, web, uh, webcast, please also do share our, our contacts so that then our customers can be able to have a second level in case uh, they are not able to reach the first, the first level. But uh, from, from where I sit, I, th I think we have also empowered our teams uh, but it doesn't hurt to get in touch with us and we'll always see what we can be able to, to offer in return. Is that all, Diana? Uh, yes, Dorcas, that is it from my end. Okay. Yes. So, th thank you so very much. I want to now maybe give this meeting uh, to Moses. Uh, so that he can uh, give us the final remarks and, and the vote of thanks. Thank you so very much. Uh, it was a really great pleasure engaging on this forum. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dorcas. Let me take the opportunity to thank our customers for attending. I, I think uh, creating time out of your busy schedule, uh, we don't take it for granted. Let me thank uh, the IFC team, in, um, Sarah and uh, Diana for organizing this. Thank you for, for coming through. I think uh, we had more credit today. We had very good attendance. Let me thank uh, Dorcas, our head of, of, uh, of wholesale banking for the way she has articulated the issues and uh, to, to our customers as, as, we, as we go to the festivity season, I think Dorcas has articulated to say that uh, the bank is there to support you. Please feel free to engage us in terms of the support. And uh, th thank you, thank you so much for attending. My colleagues, Peter and uh, Nancy, thank you very much for, for hosting us. I think uh, you've done a lot uh, of, the, of the background there to just facilitate this discussion. And uh, as I said earlier, we'll be posting these materials, the, 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 the content, the, the presentation, and even the video in terms of the discussion, we, we'll be posting it to our, our MSME uh, portal. So feel free to visit the MSME portal. We have had a number of, uh, a number of webinars and all those materials are there, the, 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 the presentations and, uh, and the videos for, for, the, for, 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 the, for the webinars. So feel free to continuously run through that, uh, through that portal, engage us also through that portal so that we can also keep picking, picking your feedback. Uh, Sarah, thank you, you've always come through in terms of the, the, the presentation. Thank you for that powerful presentation. And I think at this juncture, I, I would want to just declare the, the discussion as, uh, uh, as host and uh, invite you for the next discussion. I know we have another exciting discussion coming up just before we close the year. We have two li two lined up before we close the year. We will be inviting you through 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 the teams that uh, that, that invited you. Feel free to to join us as we as we go into the next uh, the next webinars. So thank you so much, team. So we could leave at our pressure. I, I think uh, the discussion is, is, is over for today. We could leave at our pressure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Moses. Thank you.